गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन मेथड एंड वी हैव आल्सो स्टडी लिटिल बिट अबाउट द मेथड्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन मेथड विद एन डब्ल्यू सी एम मेथड so today we will solve an example of transported transportation method by nwca method that is north west corner method okay so we have an question related to transportation method that is given here i am writing here this look at your screen a question is given here that we have to solve by transportation of nwca method okay this is the question now let us see what is the question the question is the question is suppose a manufacturing company owns three factories or you can say that there is three sources okay and it distribute his products to five different retail agencies or you can say that to five different destinations okay the following table shows the capacity of the three factories capacity of that is given in the right most column okay right most column is given in the capacity of the factories the quantity of products required by the various retail agencies requirement that is in the bottom row in the bottom row the requirement of different retail agencies is given okay this is the bottom row and the cost of shipping one unit of the product from each of the three factories to each of the five retail agency the cost of per unit per unit cost is given here okay what is the per unit cost per unit cost of these One nine thirteen thirty six five. The first row, that is first factory, and the row that is in front of the first factory. So these are the cost of shipping per unit. Okay, cost of per unit shipping cost. So this is your question. Okay. usually the above table is referred as transportation table usually actually generally this table is called your transportation problem now which provides the basic information regarding the transportation problem this is the basic information this is the the table shows the basic information about the transportation problem that we have to solve the quantities inside the table are known as transportation cost per unit of the product the quantities inside the table means this one uh, let's i increase the size of the table increase the size of the table so this now this is the i have completed the size of the table okay. please join soon okay now we have numerical uh, i am also increasing the size of this this let's increase the size of Now, 
look in the blow look in the blow of the table usually the tab above table is referred as transportation problem table which provides the basic information regarding the transportation problem the quantities inside the table are known as transportation cost per unit of the product means 19133651 what is this these are the cost of per unit transportation okay so this is per unit transportation cost for example suppose that you have to send the product from factory 1 to factory 3 the retail agency 3 now you have to send the product from factory 1 to retail agency 3 so what is the per unit cost that is 13 13 is the per unit cost to send the product from factory 1 to retail agency 3 similarly if you have to send the product from factory 3 to retail agency 1 so what is the transportation cost the transportation cost to send the product from factory 3 to retail agency 3 is 1 okay this is given here the capacity of the factory is 1 2 3 is 50 100 and 150 these are the capacity this is given here the capacity of factory 1 is 50 capacity of factory 2 100 and capacity of factory 3 150 it means the factory 1 produces 50 units factory 2 produces 100 unit factory 3 produces 150 units and the requirement of the retail agencies the requirement of retail agencies are given as how requirement the requirement for the retail agency 1 is 100 units the requirement of retail agency 2 60 unit the requirement of retail agency 3 is 50 unit requirement of retail agency 4 is 50 unit and the requirement of retail agency 5 is 40 unit so these are the requirement of your different different retail agency now by using nwcm method okay by using nwcm method you have to find the basic initial feasible solution or you can say that you have to find the initial feasible solution for given transportation problem in this case look at here the case which is given here what is per unit cost in this case the transportation cost of per unit of one unit from factory 1 to retail agency 1 is 1 take it फैक्ट्री एक से रिटेल एजेंसी एक तक भेजने के लिए पर यूनिट कॉस्ट है एक रुपया ठीक सिमिलरली फ्रॉम फैक्ट्री वन टू रिटेल एजेंसी टू पर यूनिट कॉस्ट इज नाइन एंड फ्रॉम फैक्ट्री वन टू रिटेल एजेंसी थ्री थर्टीन फ्रॉम फैक्ट्री वन टू रिटेल एजेंसी फोर द पर यूनिट कॉस्ट इज थर्टी सिक्स एंड From factory one to retail agency five, the per unit cost is fifty one, and so on. Similarly, two to one, two to two, two to three, two to four, two to five, and from factory three to one, retail agency one, factory three to retail agency two, factory three to retail agency three, factory three to retail agency four, factory four to three to retail agency five. So these are the per unit cost are given here. Okay, now, now you have to find the NWCM method. and basic feasible solution so i have made here a table that is given in the question this okay i have written 1 2 3 4 5 as a p q r s and t and i have written factories 1 2 3 that is a b c i have written this okay. you can also write either 1 2 3 or a b c okay you can write anything this i'm changing here if you are not getting so i can change here p q r s and t these are the retail agencies now factory 
A factory to B and factory three and that okay. Okay. Now I think this should not be broken. Now let us see. I have written P Q R S and P. These are these are the retail agencies. A B C. Okay, these are the your factories. And here requirement of a retail agency is given: hundred unit, sixty unit, fifty unit, fifty unit, forty unit. And the capacity of factories A B C. is given here that is 50 unit 100 unit and 150 units okay so let's i delete these all i will make it later okay the crossing line i am deleting by which you can better understand okay i will Merit letter. Yes. I will give you one. Now, look at the method or the process that I have told in the previous lecture that how we have to solve the NWCM method. So I have already uh, discussed it. So let's. I am showing you the. method of transportation by and wcm uh i told you let us see this is the method to solve the and wcm method okay the simplest of the procedure used to generate an initial feasible solution is and wcm it is so called because we begin with the north west north west or upper left corner cell of our transportation table various stages of this method can be summarized as in north west or upper left corner so in this table upper left corner is this this is your upper left corner okay and if you know the direction so what is your north west direction what should be your north north direction i am making a direction let us insert two lines okay so this is one line and again i am drawing a line that is this so these are the lines so this direction the above this direction is called your north and just opposite to north this is south and right hand side is your east and left hand side is your west so between the north and west that is this direction this this is called your north west okay so in the table you are also looking that this is your north west if this table is a rectangle then this direction is your north west direction which comes under the left upper most upper left corner so that is one okay so we will start from the north west or upper left corner so what is the first step the first step is select the north west that is upper left hand corner cell of the transportation table and allocate as many units as possible equal to the minimum between available supply and demand requirement okay look at here allocate as many units as possible equal to the minimum between available supply and demand now look in the table this is your supply factory a can supply only 50 units okay and the requirement of retail agency p is 
100 units okay so now what is the minimum between supply and requirement supply is 50 units and the requirement is 100 units so which one is minimum 50 so we will allocate on the left upper corner in this that is 50 so we have allocated 50 units to the retail agency p it means we have 50 units item from the factory a to retail agency p and what is the per unit cost per unit cost is 1 1 is your per unit cost okay so this the address of this cell according to the table that is ap ap is the address of the cell according to the table so we have written that the allocation of ap is 50 i am written here okay i have written here 50 okay i have written here the allocation in ap ap means from factory a to retail agency p we have allocated 50 unit which was the minimum between capacity and requirement capacity was 50 and requirement was 100 so this is minimum capacity means supply of the factory was minimum from the requirement of retail agency p so we will allocate minimum now what is the next step adjust the supply and demand numbers in the respective rows and columns now adjustment means after giving the 50 units after giving the 50 units how many units have left with factory a actually the supply capacity was factory a was 50 and it has allocated all the units to p okay so how many units will be left zero so we will cross it we will cross it that means we don't have any unit in the factory a now we have crossed it okay i have crossed it by drawing a line now this is the adjustment of row now after getting the 50 units what is the requirement of retail agency p actually the original requirement of p was 100 units and he has got only 50 units from the a so how many units are remaining now that is 50 units are left okay so we will allocate we will write down 50 just below the 100 units after crossing the 100 so we will cross the 100 and write down the 50 because the requirement of 50 has been fulfilled by agency or oh, factory a so after allocating 50 the requirement is now this 50 is left okay now now the requirement of his p only 50 because he have got in the 50 units from a okay now next step next step you if the supply for the first row is exhausted then move down to the first cell in the second row and first column and go to step 2 okay if the demand for the first column is satisfied then move horizontally to the next cell in the second column and first row and go to step 2 these are the two condition so in the step 3 there are two condition either if the supply is exhausted or demand is exhausted so here what is condition supply is exhausted okay supply is exhausted so what we have to do then move down to the first cell in the second row first cell this and second row first cell in the second row and go to the step 2 step 2 means continue to the proceed Sorry. adjust the supply and demand numbers in the respective rows and columns now we have to again adjust okay so the requirement was p left with 50 units okay so we and the capacity of factory b is 100 units so which with 
which is the minimum between 100 and this 50. 50 unit is minimum. So we will allocate 50 units to the retail agency P. Okay. We will allocate here 50 units to the retail agency P from the factory B. It means the retail agency P will take 50 units from the factory B to fulfill his requirement. Okay, so we have allocated 50 units. Now, the requirement of retail agency P has been fulfilled. So what we will do? We will cross the line on 50. Okay, I have cut it now. I have cut it now because the requirement of P has been fulfilled. How? P has taken 50 units from the A and 50 units from the B. Now, per unit cost for P is from factory A is 1 and per unit cost from factory B is 24. Okay. Now, the requirement of P has been fulfilled now, so we will cross it. After giving the 50 units, after giving the 50 units to P, how many units will be left with factory B? Actually, the original capacity was factory B was 100, but he has given 50 units to the P. So how many will be left? 50 units. 100 minus 50. So 50 units will be left. So after crossing this 100, we will route down here 50. Now factory B has only 50 units after giving the 50 units to P. Okay. Now. What we have to do again, let us see in next one. Since the requirement of P has been exhausted now, requirement of P has been exhausted now. So, what we will do? We will move in the second column. Q is our second column. Okay. So, we will move to the second column and again go to step two. That is, we have to adjust. So, the requirement of Q is 60 units. This is requirement. I am going to hold it. Okay. And the is four. Now. Okay. The requirement of Q is 60 units. And the factory B has only 50 units. Factory B has 50 units, but the requirement of Q is 60 units. So, factory B will send the 50 units to the retail agency Q. This is 50. Okay. So, we will allocate 50 in the Q. Okay. From the B. So, I have allocated 50 units here. Look at the screen. Now, what was the requirement of Q left after getting the 50 units how many requirement is left now 10 units because the original requirement of original requirement of Q was 60 units okay so he has got only 50 units from B so after cutting this control C, control e, let's Cross the 60 and cross the 60 and write down the 10. Okay. We will write down 10 below the 60. Okay. Because only 10 units are left for the requirement of Q. But B was producing 50 units since B was producing 50 units and sorry B was producing 100 units he has given 50 units to P and 50 units to Q so how many units are left with B none so we will cross it okay we will cross it so it means the supply of B has exhausted now Okay, 
the supply of B has exhausted now. We will cut it. Okay. So the requirement of P has been fulfilled, but the requirement of Q is still left with 10 units. Okay. Now let's go to in the next row. Now we have to supply the product from factory C. So in the first column, requirement of P has been fulfilled. In the second column, 10 units are left with Q. The requirement of Q is left with 10 units. Okay. So we will allocate 10 units to the Q. From where? From the factory C. From the factory C, we will give 10 units to the retail agency Q. Okay. So after giving the 10 units, the requirement of Q will be fulfilled. Okay. Requirement of Q will be fulfilled because original requirement of the Q is Q was 50 units. So 50 units has got from the factory B and 10 units got from the factory C. Retail agency Q got 50 units from the factory B and 10 units from the factory C. Here, to get 50 units, Q had paid 12 unit, 12, uh, 12 per unit cost for the 50 units. Is the cost, sitting cost per unit is 12. Sitting cost per unit is 12. When he got the product from factory B and from the factory C, from the factory C, when he has to take 10 units, he paid 33 per unit shipping cost. Here, from B, he has paid 12 per unit cost. Okay, per unit cost is 12 for 50 units. But here, when he taken the product from factory C, he paid 33 units per cost. Okay, for 10 units. Now, the requirement of Q is fulfilled now. So we will cross it. After giving the 10 units to the Q, how many units are left with factory C? So since factory C has originally 150 units and after giving the 10 units, how many units will be left? That is 140. Says 140. Okay, so 140 are left with factory C. And now the requirement of Q is over now. And what is the requirement of retail agency R now? The requirement of R is 50 units. Okay, the requirement of R is 50 units. And how many units are left with factory C? That is 140 units. Factory C has 140 units and the requirement of R is 50 units. So between the 140 and 50, which one is the minimum? That is 50. So we will allocate 50 units to the retail agency R. It means we will send the 50 units from factory C to retail agency R. Okay. So after getting the 50 units, the requirement of R will be over. So what we will do? We will cross it. We will cross it. Yes, I have crossed it. So the requirement of R is now fulfilled. And what are the units left with factory C? After giving the 50 units to R, so we will reduce 50 from the 140. Okay. So let's cross the 140 and after reducing 50 units, how much will be left? That is 90 units. So we will write down here 90 units. I have written here 90 units. Okay. 90 units are left with factory C. Now, how many retail agency have got their requirement? That is P, F, what the his full requirement, Q, 
is also got the full requirement r is also got the full requirement means the requirement of p q and r is fulfilled now okay now the requirement of s is 50 units this the requirement of s is 50 units and how many units are left with factory c that is 90 units factory c has still 90 units and the requirement of s is 50 units so between the 90 and 50 which one is less which one is less that is 50 between the 90 and 50 50 is less so we will allocate the 50 unit to the s come here okay so here I have written 50 units. So the requirement of retail agency as S is fulfilled now. So what we will do? We will cross the requirement of S because the requirement of S is exhausted. Okay. After giving the 50 units to retail agency S, how many units are left with? Factory C. Previously, the factory C has 90 units and he has given 50 units to the retail agency S. So, how many units are left? That is 40. So, I have write down 40 to the here. Okay. I have written 40 in this column. Now, Okay, let us see, move ahead, what is the requirement of retail agency T? The requirement of retail agency T is 40 units. And how many units are left with factory C? That is 40 units. So the requirement of retail agency T is equal to the, the capacity of the factory C. Means the remaining units in factory C is equal to the requirement of retail agency T. So all the left units of factory C will be given to the retail agency T. That is 40. So I have allocated 40 units here. Okay. This is written here. Okay. So let us see. Now we will cross this 40. I have draw a line to cross this and the supply of factory c is exhausted now and the requirement of t is also exhausted so i will also cross it so i have crossed it also now the capacity or you can say that supply of all the factories have been exhausted means all the units have been given to the different different retail agency and the requirement of all the retail agency is also exhausted so i have also crossed all the requirements here okay so how it is possible now let so here capacity of the factory was we will add here capacity of a that was 50 unit Capacity of B, that was 100 units. And capacity of C, that is 150 units. So after adding all these capacities, after adding all these capacities, we will find the total capacity of all three factory is 300. Okay? The capacity of all three factories is 300. 50, 100, and 150. So 50, 100, 150 plus 150, that is 300. Okay. And what about the requirement? The requirement of P, P, Q, R, S, and T. The requirement of P, Q, R, S, and T is given here. So we will add all these units. The requirement of P was 100 units. Requirement of P was 60 units. 
requirement of R was 50 units, requirement of S was 50 units, and requirement of T was 40 units. So after adding all these quantities, that is 100, 60, 50, 50, and 40. So we will get 300. Okay. So this is 300. Requirement of all the retail agencies is 300. So here we are looking that the capacity and the requirement is equal. The capacity of all the factories and the requirement of the all the retail agencies is equal. So when the balance is above, when the problem is given this type, when supply and demand is equal, so this is called your balanced transportation problem. Balanced. If the capacity and requirement, or you can say that supply and demand is not equal, then we will say that the transportation problem is unbalanced. But in this case, the transportation problem is balanced. Okay. So let us see what are the allocation from factory A to P. From factory A to P, 50 units. Let us write down here. Units. Okay, so we have allocated 50 units to A to P, and per unit cost is one. Per unit cost is one. So what we have to do? Total cost will be what will be total cost? We will multiply per unit cost to the unit that have to supply to P. The so total unit supply to P from A that was 50. So we will multiply 50 into one. Okay. This is the total cost. What is total cost? 50 into 1, that is this. 50. Again, we have supplied 50 units from factory B to retail agency P. So here, 50 units, that is 50. And, and, the per unit cost from B to P was 24. The per unit cost for B to P is 24. So we have sent 50 units to do we multiply 50 by 24. What will become? That is 1200. Okay. So we will get the 50 into 24, that is 1200. And we have also sent from B, from factory B to retail agency Q is 50 units. Okay. We have also sent 50 units to the retail agency Q. So 50 into per unit cost is how much? 12. From factory B to factory, retail agency Q, the uh, transport uh, per unit cost is 12. So 50 units we have sent and per unit cost is 12. So we will multiply 50 to 12. So we will get the total transportation cost from B to Q. That is 600. I have written here. Now, we have sent 10 units. 10 units to retail agency Q. From where? From the factory C. From the factory C, we have sent 10 units to the retail agency Q. And what is the per unit shipping cost? The per unit shipping cost is 33. That is 33. So 10 into 33. We will multiply 10 into 33. So total cost to send the 10 units from C to Q is 330. This. Okay. So this is the total cost from sending C to Q. Now again, we have also sent 50 units from factory C to retail agency R. 
So, what is the per unit transportation cost? That is one. So we will multiply fifty into one. Fifty into one. Okay. So per unit, since per unit transportation cost is one, and we have sent fifty units, so total cost from C to R is fifty. Okay. Again, we have sent fifty units from factory C to retail agency S, and to sending from factory c to retail agency s what is the per unit cost that is 23 23 is per unit transportation cost from c to s so we will multiply 50 into 23 okay 50 into 23 that is total cost from c to s is 1150 1150 again we have sent 40 units from factory c to retail agency t we have sent 40 units from factory c to retail agency t so what is the cost associated with c to t what is the cost associated with c to t so we will multiply 40 into 26 40 into 26 okay so 100 1040 is the total cost from c to t now what is the total cost that is associated this is what is called this is called your initial feasible solution so we will add all these transportation cost so 50 Fifty plus twelve hundred plus six hundred plus three hundred thirty plus fifty plus one thousand one hundred fifty plus one thousand forty. So total initial basic feasible solution will become that is four thousand four hundred twenty. Four thousand four hundred twenty. Okay. So this is your basic feasible solution. Okay, so according to the NWCM method, the total transportation cost associated with all these, according to the given transportation problem, that is four thousand four hundred twenty. Now, what about the left cells, such as this nine, thirteen, thirty-six, fifty-one, sixty, twenty-one, and this fourteen? What about these left cells? So the cost associated with these cells is zero, because we have not supplied any product from these sources. Okay, so the cost is zero. So when you will add the zero, so there is no value. Okay, so that's why the transportation initial basic feasible solution is. Four thousand four hundred twenty. So this is the complete NWCM method. If yeah, the case is balanced transportation. If there is no balanced, so then you have to add either dummy dummy row or dummy column according to the situation. If the supply that is capacity is less, so we will add a Rummy row. If the requirement is less, then you will add a run dummy column. We will study again. Uh, we will study ahead in the next topic. Okay. So by the uh, NWCM method, we will get the initial basic feasible solution. So this is the complete process. Now, if someone have any query, so you can ask. Any query? This is the.
first method of transportation that is northwest corner method if anyone ask any question related to this nwca method so you can ask now either chat section or voice also no query okay so if there is no query so let's mark the attendance now 